Hello everyone, my name is Yokao Motonga. I am the Research and Inventory Manager at Bookbank Trust and today we are going to learn about how to preserve our personal archives at home. This video is the second part of a series that we are doing on how to build your own personal archives. So if you haven't watched the first video that teaches us how to digitize our personal archives, please go back and do that. Then come back and join us in conversation with our friend today, John. I'll first give us some background on why we are digitizing archives and talking about climate change. In 2019, Bookbank created the first ever digital catalog of the items housed in the three Macmillan Memorial Libraries. At the end of 2019, we had cataloged 137, 705 items. And then in 2020, we proceeded to weed the catalog. And later on in 2020, we started digitizing the archive that is housed on the main branch in Banda Street. This process has taken us five months and we are doing this so that we can preserve our memory and make these memories accessible to the public. For more information on our digitization work as long as everything else that we do, please visit us at www.bookbank.org and on our socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. Our hashtag for today's video is hashtag build your archive. Please tag us as we go along. I would now like to welcome John, who is a climate change expert and surveyor, to introduce himself. Karibu sana, John. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thank you, Sir Carl. Thank you for having me here. As introduced, my name is uh, John Kabuya Kalunji. I am, the built in, I am a built environment specialist. I am a building surveyor, climate change and resilience expert with a strong background in climate change preparedness, response, risk mitigation and green building. I am the Chief Technical Advisor at the Basic Group, where we deal with unique property advisory that involves building surveying, technical due diligence, and strategic sustainability consulting. You are a very busy man. Please break down for us what climate change means, um, because we might have some people in our audience who might not know what that means. For the past three million years, Gases like carbon dioxide, which are often referred to as greenhouse gases, have occurred naturally and are essential to the survival of life on the planet. Mm. But recently, over the last 100 years or so, because of urbanization, deforestation, and other human activities driven by excessive fossil fuel use, like petrol and kerosene, these greenhouse gases have risen beyond normal levels. The world has developed remarkably yeah. in terms of technology and all that. Yeah. But all this development has come at a very high cost, climate change. Climate change, and that's what anthropologists call the Anthropocene. Absolutely. Yeah. Climate change has caused shifting weather patterns that threaten food security mm -hmm. and warmer temperatures, which are destroying urban centers. The, excess, the presence of excess greenhouse gases yeah. in the atmosphere, which are actually trapped in the atmosphere, caused rising temperatures that, quite frankly, are frying the planet. At home, climate change speeds up the damage of personal and collective histories mm -hmm. and memories which are documented in our photographs, newspapers, manuscripts, letters, journals, and other material items. And before we get to the effect of climate change on our archives, are there some simple things that all of us can do to slow down or even reduce the effect of climate change? Here are some practical steps. Number one, use a carbon footprint calculator to track how your daily activities contribute to climate change. So, um, what is a carbon footprint calculator? Well, a carbon foot calculator is a tool that helps to calculate the impact of your everyday choices on the environment. For example, choosing to cycle instead of uh, taking a bus yeah. or to purchase local goods instead of uh, imported ones. These tools are readily available online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And then number two, you need to get in touch with your local organization in your area that plants trees at least to offset some of the carbon footprint out of your choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number three, use recycle, recyclable materials as much as you can, as much as possible, sorry, and reduce the use of single-use plastics. And number four, use resources such as water 
and electricity consciously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for those four tips. So back to our archives. What is climate change damage and what does it do to our personal archives? Climate change damage occurs when excess greenhouse gases in the atmosphere cause rising temperatures mm -hmm. and high humidity and high moisture levels that cause mold growth, cockling, fading, increased brittleness, etc. to our archives. Cuckling refers to the distortion of paper, parchments or textiles that may appear as wrinkles, packers or ripples, often in parallel ridges mm -hmm. without creases. Additionally, paper archives sorry, can be damaged by fading due to overexposure to light, which fades the text. Mm -hmm. Warping and brittleness occurs when personal archival items are not stored in optimum temperatures, which is anything above uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we've got cockling, brittleness and warping, which are some signs of climate change damage. How do we prevent these signs and others in our personal archives? It all begins with an honest assessment of the physical state of your archival material and the state of your storage. Mm -hmm. The main threats to archives are number one, the nature of archives material. Different kinds of paper react differently to climate change. You're right. Yes, exactly. Natural and man-made disasters, mm -hmm. the environment in which archival material is stored, the way you handle your material, all matters. You can prevent damage by first controlling the atmospheric pollution mm -hmm. and things like dust and gases. Good landscaping will help reduce dust and, if possible, you may install some dust control features in the building where your archive is stored. A good example is window blinds or nets. Mm -hmm. Store the archival material away from any windows or doors right. in order to limit dust exposure. Should any fugitive dust make its way into your archive, use a gentle round brush. I read somewhere some time ago that you know the the blush makeup brush, that it's apparently right. gentle enough to just get all that dust off nicely. Is that, is that true? Absolutely, it is. And uh, such kind of brushes are very uh, relevant and very useful. Secondly, a vacuum cleaner will also get rid of the dust. Then, the lighting in areas where mm. you store your archives is also important. Right. The radiation of UV light destroys the material of archives, turning them yellow air or brown. I've seen that a lot You've with seen that newspapers. A lot, uh, yeah. Precisely, yeah. especially the old ones. Yeah. yeah. So lighting levels should be kept as low as practically possible in storage, reading and display areas. Is this why um, in, in archives across the world, you, you tend to find that archives are very dark places? It's like it's not, you don't have it too much light coming in in, a, in an archive. Exactly, controlled uh, lighting. That's the perfect conditions. Now, the internal environment is just as crucial as the external one. Uh -huh. Yeah, for a start, by controlling our indoor temperatures, by regulating the thermal comfort, we are able to control the interiors. Secondly, Controlling indoor temperatures and relative humidity will also prevent infestation of insects like cockroaches, book lice, beetles, and termites, which feed on organic substances like paper, pastes, glues that we use to bind books. These insects prefer warm, dark, damp, dirty, and poorly ventilated conditions. Mm. It is always advisable to maintain temperatures at 20 degrees and below and relative humidity at 65%. Okay. Installing air quality monitors will help you to monitor and track when these environmental conditions are recording abnormal levels mm -hmm. that will pose a risk to the integrity of your archives. Mm. You can also install humidifiers or dehumidifiers to control humidity levels within buildings. So that's a lot of equipment. Oh, yes, and yes. what happens if I can't access this? Well, there are some domestic hacks that you can, that can be used, for example. That's what I need to hear. Exactly. If you need to humidify your house, you can bring in more plants, more plants. boil water indoors, wet your curtains, or dry your laundry indoors. To do the opposite, which is to dehumidify your house, mm -hmm. 
remove the indoor plants that we've talked about, if any, mm -hmm. fix any leaks, properly ventilate the indoors and use baking soda or charcoal in a bowl, which you can place in suspected damp areas. Oh, I see, I see. And what else do we need to be aware of within the indoor environment of our personal archives? Well, pests. Uh, pests like rats and mice can also irreversibly damage your archives. Global warming is forcing pests into different habitats for survival. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some of these locations are in our archives. Mm -hmm. It is advisable to have a simple integrated pest management plan in place to mitigate this risk. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can have frequent monitoring of the conditions surrounding the archive in order to eliminate all control sources of infestation. Okay. And so to sum up what we have learned, the ideal environmental conditions to preserve and protect our archives include one, control temperature, two, relative humidity, and three, clean air with good circulation, four, controlled light sources, and freedom from insects and pest infestation. So those are my five top tips. Yes, and you are an excellent student. The Thank power you. is in <laughs> your hands to control your immediate environment and to protect your archives in your homes and offices for years to come. Yes, it's critical now more than ever that we tell our own stories. And this means that we must not only document our stories, but also protect them. Thank you, John, for this great information. Thank you for having me.